agendized item must fill out a speaker card and submit that um, to Velma and at the appropriate time she will let me know if you'd like to address the board. So at this time I would like to uh, adopt tonight's agenda which is uh, a period of public input. We have one information item and one action item. So I'm looking so for a motion to approve tonight's agenda. So moved. A uh, motion by Mrs. Lindsay and a second. Second. Second by Mrs. Harvey. Can we have a roll call, please? Board Member Collins. Aye. Board Member Harvey. Aye. Board Member Lindsay. Aye. Board Member Miyakawa. Sorry, I don't know what my eye is. I just got online. Um, you're adopting the agenda. Aye. Board Member Ra. Aye, that's a 5-0 vote. Tonight's um, special board meeting has an agenda that has been officially adopted. And at this time, if all of you would like to rise with me, you can face your screen. You can see uh, right behind Eric's head, there is a flag and we will do the Pledge of Allegiance. Ready, begin. I pledge allegiance, I pledge allegiance to the flag. To the flag. Of the, United of the United States, States of, America, of America and to the republic for which it stands, stands one, one nation, nation under God, under God all, and it is a world with liberty and justice for all. all. I thank you all for joining me in the Pledge of Allegiance. At this time, we are moving to the communication section of our board meeting where we have public participation. This is a time that anyone would like to address the board on any non-agendized item. Uh, Velma, can you tell me if you have any speaker cards? I have not received any speaker cards. Okay, we will then move to um, item six, which, which is information and discussion. We will turn the time over to our superintendent who will give us an update on the TK hyphen six waiver update. Eric, if you'd like to go forward. Great. Well, good evening, uh, governing board. First of all, thank you for uh, your willingness to schedule a special board meeting uh, this evening, especially since we have a regular board meeting next week. But there are a couple of uh, important items we needed to uh, address. One is the uh, submitting of the TK waiver, and then the other on the agenda is the approval of the uh, LCAP or LCP, but and they're both tied together. Uh, this is an information item, and uh, what I did, on, I wanted to do a brief presentation, and uh, can we go to the next slide, please? I think it's important uh, each time uh, that we have to kind of recap where we've been, because time just continues to march on, and uh, I think we have to take a step back in time and see how we've arrived where we are right now. So this slide just kind of goes back briefly. There's a lot more that's happened, but just to kind of jog everyone's memory and kind of show the sequence that we've been following. So if you go back to next, last year, March 18th, uh, the day that really has changed uh, uh, how we do things in our lives and education and um, you know just in our lives. But March 18th, uh, all of our schools were um, shut down at that time and we went to a, uh, a distance learning program and uh, we call that almost like an emergency distance learning and uh, we made it through the, the remainder of the year uh, with everyone's efforts and then during the summer we were busy planning to bring students back uh, for in-person learning and all set ready to go and July 13th uh, the governor um, comes up with a mandate uh, due to the increased spread of, of positive cases in our county. And so March 13th changed things. We had to pivot and start an in-person learning program. So we start, I mean, not in-person, uh, distance learning program. And so we've been in the process of implementing that. Um, things we feel are going very well. Um, and uh, so our Sylvan Select program was created and uh, now we find ourselves here. And uh, I'll show a slide in a moment, but I wanted to just finish my bullets, but I'm gonna show you a slide of the tiered system uh, that the governor 
established that shows uh, the different stages of what schools are eligible to do. So at this stage, we're, and I'll show you in a minute, but we're in the uh, purple color. And when you're in that tier, uh, you are not permitted to uh, have in-person learning. So one of the options the governor provided was if your county is in purple, you could apply for a TK6 waiver uh, to um, be able to provide in-person learning. And that's what we're, um, we'll be speaking about this evening. Our intent uh, after presenting this tonight and giving an opportunity uh, to hear uh, the elements of that, uh, that waiver, to submit this waiver to uh, our local public health department uh, tomorrow. And uh, the process with that, it usually takes two or three days for the public health department to review our application, make sure it's complete, and then they forward it to the California Department um, of Public Health, who makes the final determination. Um, the trend has been at least two weeks uh, for uh, that agency to either contact the district and ask questions um, or make that approval process. The most current update, um, right now, eight of our, out of our 14 public school districts who submitted waivers have been approved. Most of those districts that have been approved are smaller school districts. Now this doesn't include private schools. Uh, that's another category. Uh, but as far as public schools in our county, eight have been approved. Um, of, that, of those eight, probably the largest district is Oakdale's and that was just approved last week. Now there were still um, six other districts pending. Um, uh, waiting for that approval. And there are 10 districts and including ourselves who have not submitted uh, waivers at this time. And if you look at those, those districts, uh, they're usually your larger districts. And again, um, this waiver process, give, there's a lot of technical um, expectations uh, to answer and uh, logistics. So I think it makes sense as far as the timing, as you see smaller districts starting out earlier and then the later uh, we go in the process, uh, you have your larger districts. Okay, next slide, please. Now, this is the sample of the, uh, the rating system or the tiered system. And uh, you can see on the California map, um, like our county is currently in purple. That means it's widespread. There's a formula that goes along with it uh, per 100,000 population. Um, the discussion um, over the last several weeks has been the, the um, anticipation that the, the rates are falling and that our district, I mean, our uh, county will be in the red uh, tier soon. And I'll talk a little bit more about what that um, impacts that has on, on our school district and the schools in our county. Okay, next slide, please. Okay, so there's three pathways and this is, I wanted to include this slide because people get so confused uh, about ways to uh, provide in-person learning. Okay, so the first one I, I, I just talked about is the TK through six waiver application. And again, that's for schools if, and counties if you're in the purple. And um, based upon that approval, you can open up in-person learning uh, for those grade levels. The other um, thing we should start to consider is once schools, uh, counties um, move into tier two or red, um, in-person learning, uh, you, can, you can provide it for actually t grades TK through 12. But again, even with that, you still have to meet basically all the requirements in the waiver. So um, schools would still be required or districts would still be required um, to respond all of the, the, um, the items on, on the waiver. And then the other one is the small group cohorts. And that guidance came out uh, back on August 25th. And again, uh, they, they realized that there were certain uh, groups of students that are not um, excelling or accessing um, their education well through distance learning. And for those groups, they wanted to provide um, an opportunity to serve those students. And that is totally outside of the waiver. It's uh, not part of the red tier uh, process. It is something that districts could uh, implement, but the key thing is a, a cohort is a maximum of 16 individuals. 
And our district has been working on that. Uh, we also thought it was a great way for us to slowly phase in uh, having some of our students coming back for in-person learning. Um, that the whole intent of that, again, was to serve special uh, groups of students with the first priority being special education students. And so that's been our focus. And we're looking at uh, starting that program on October 1st. Uh, those parents have been contacted. And again, we're starting with just three small classes of students. And uh, again, I, we, we see that as a good opportunity for us to, to you know, look at all the logistical ends of actually having students on campus. Okay, next slide. Okay, I just wanna briefly uh, go over the waiver elements because uh, the board has had an opportunity to read through the, the waiver, uh, but anybody that's just listening uh, to this uh, meeting, just a, re a review of that. Uh, the first one is just having protocols for cleaning and, and disinfection, um, physical distancing requirements, a lot, all of these things you can imagine take a lot of uh, planning and logistics. And we've been working on this actually for over the last month. And uh, so again, those are all detailed and specifics in the waiver uh, relating to face covering and other uh, essential protective gear. And then the cohorting, again, the cohorting on this is different. I wanna share that because we use the word cohort in the small group instruction. That is groups of 16 that's specific to that guidance only. This is referring to a cohort as one group of students and a teacher being together and not mixing. So it doesn't have guidance with that regarding numbers. Okay, next slide, please. Uh, the other one uh, section is on uh, healthy hygiene and practices. Um, part of, uh, we've been, again, uh, taking care of uh, ordering different uh, uh, new sanitation, uh, hand washing stations and um, for sanitation, uh, the entrance, egress and movement within the school. Uh, we've also started ordering and researching different uh, decals and labels and signage uh, that would enable us to ensure a safe uh, path of travel. Uh, the health screening for students and staff uh, those protocols are all lined out in that waiver. And then the identification uh, tracing of contacts, we've been working a lot with um, our local um, Department of Public Health. Uh, last Friday, uh, during our weekly meetings, a uh, lot of new information is coming forward. And our local public health agency has actually developed a software program uh, to help districts um, do the identification and tracing, tracing of contacts. Uh, next slide, please. Triggers uh, for switching to distance learning. Again, that's all outlined in there. There's criteria. And again, we have to be prepared uh, as we start, If well, if, once we move into in-person learning uh, to be able to pivot back to distance learning if um, we have um, positive cases and that we're directed to close again. So you, we just have to be uh, have that outlined in the plan as well. Staff training and family education, I think that's gonna be really important. Again, um, again, some of the students, especially our TK and K, uh, have never been to school. And so um, retraining and the environment they're coming back to will be very different. And so uh, our plan outlines that as well. And then the communication plans, how the superintendent uh, will communicate with our students and staff. And I, I have some of that outlined uh, in, a, in a, uh, a future slide here. Okay, those are all the components of the waiver. Um, what I wanted to wrap it up with, again, I'm not gonna go into deep detail at this point on the waiver. Um, and in, so here, here's our plan. October 6th, uh, we are going to, at our uh, board meeting, we're going to present a reopening proposal to the governing board. And with that proposal, we're gonna request that the board approve for the superintendent to move forward with implementing the plan provided uh, below, whether through the waiver approval process or being eligible to reopen uh, due to Stanislaus County being in the red tier. And then at that meeting, we'll get into the nuts and bolts um, and really give more detail. The, the goal of this meeting 
was just to present the waiver so that the board could see it. Um, and then it's just an application. We will submit that application. The board makes the final approval on what the plan is gonna be. We will hopefully bring a, a good proposal to the board uh, that, you, that you can consider. And so I'll be providing more uh, details regarding that at the October 6th forum. But just to give an idea of what our plan would be from that, um, if the board uh, approves that on the 6th, uh, we will follow that up right away on the 7th with a forum for our district staff. So we can um, give them an opportunity to ask questions, uh, give an um, outline of the plan for them. And then on the 8th, follow that up with a school community forum so that our parents and other stakeholders can also have that opportunity uh, to ask those questions. So the plan, and you can see the proposed timeline, would be on October 26th, and that again is only one, if the board approves it, two, if the waiver is approved by that timeline, or three, we're in uh, the counties in tier red. So um, this is just to give an idea of what we want to do that was required on the waiver to give an anticipated start time. So this is the model we're looking at. And again, like I said, we will have more detail uh, regarding this. Um, but at this point, our, our recommendation is going to be, to be bringing back our TK, kindergarten, and first grade students on the 26th and bring them back to a, a full day schedule, uh, five days a week, uh, following all of the distance, uh, I mean, all of the uh, social distancing guidelines, everything outlined in the waiver. We also will continue to uh, provide our Sylvan Select distance learning program. So families uh, that don't feel comfortable returning to this type of uh, in-person learning, uh, their learning will continue with the program they've been having uh, provided since the beginning of the school year. And our goal during this time before the 26th is to provide enough detailed information for families um, so that they can get a picture of whether or not they want to make that choice. Uh, we've been setting up some model classrooms. Um, we've been taking pictures. So that'll be part of the presentation next week. So people can visually see um, what a classroom would look like in a primary classroom. Uh, the next step, and again, will be outlined also in the plan you're gonna be approving in our next agenda item, our LCP. We talked about phase two, I, it was, moving from distance learning into a phased program. And so what we're gonna look at here is the following week, um, starting to bring back our second and third grade students, again, uh, having them five days a week. Um, and those families can also choose to uh, be part of our distance learning um, program that we currently have. Now, our goal with doing this is we, there's a lot of logistics with this. And again, I keep talking about safety. Safety is our number one priority. We, we want to make sure all these protocols are in place that, you know, it's easy to put it on a piece of paper. Um, what you got to have time to do is actually work through the process. And so again, that phased in approach uh, with our uh, TKK and one, we're hoping within that week, we'd be able to iron out any of our concerns before we bring back uh, our second and third grade. Now, if we don't feel comfortable with that, we'll talk about, uh, you know, uh, delaying that. But I'm anticipating, again, with just the work we've done already, that we'll be ready for that. Now, what about our grades four through six, even though they're included in the waiver? Um, we, we need to ensure that we have adequate social distancing, physical distancing uh, on the campuses and um, again, we're working with larger class sizes in grades four through six. Um, we're looking, talking about bigger bodies. And so again, what we wanna look at for our four through six is to be able to support them in their learning. But our strategy, um, looking at November 2nd, would just to be serving those students in the small cohort type of model. So uh, we included it in the waiver, uh, we will, uh, continue to work on our plans with that and give more detail uh, at our, our next meeting. I just think it's important for people to understand with this, with this planning. There's not one district, at least in this county, that has the same plan. Um, everybody's 
each district is looking at their own individual input from stakeholders, their own uh, specific dynamics. Uh, some have filed a waiver, some have not. And so it's really an individual thing. And I feel very positive um, with the direction we have taken. Um, we want to make sure, you know, we feel comfortable before uh, opening our schools. And that'll be part of our discussion at the October 6th meeting. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Fredrickson. Uh, as <clears throat> each board member knows, they've had the, the waiver for about a week, a chance to read it, review it, ask questions. Um, all the questions that were are given in writing uh, were responded to in writing or you had your verbal questions answered to you verbally. At this time, before we go on to our next item, I'm going to ask each board member if they had any further questions before we went to vote on the LCAP. We'll go in the following order. Mr. Collins first, then Mrs. Miyakawa, then Mrs. Harvey, then Mrs. Lindsay, and then Mr. Roth. Um, so in that order, if you don't have anything, if all your questions have been answered, you can just say so, and we'll move on to the LCAP. So starting with Mr. Collins. Mr. Roth, can I clarify that you're asking for questions about the LCP right now and not the waiver? No, I'm asking for if... Uh, regarding the the waiver if you had any further questions all of us have had it for a week we've done our questions but if based upon the presentation today if you needed any more questions clarified about the waiver you're welcome to ask them at this time thank you I I may have some but I'll submit them in writing later this week very good thank you next Miss Harvey Hi, um, thank you so much. I wanted to clarify, if we drop to red or move to red, we're in purple now, we move to red, does that mean that we don't need the waiver anymore or we're still gonna do a phased approach? Um, I think that's what I understood, but if you could just add some clarification, uh, that would be wonderful, thank you. Yeah, yeah, if you end up with red, that means the waiver is not required. And what we need to get some clarification on uh, with, with the red model, so for example, Let's say we didn't do the waiver. We came back with the county being in red and then the county went back into purple. We would need to get clarification whether schools that opened without a waiver, would they have to close? Uh, and yet those schools that had the waiver because you did it during purple, you would be able to continue your, your being open. But we need to get some clarification on that. So by having the waiver, it kind of um, ensures that the path that we're on, regardless of whether we're going to red or purple, if we backtrack a little bit, we're still gonna stay on that path. Right, right. right. Thank you. Yes, that's correct. That's why we're submitting the waiver. All right, thank you very much. Uh, Ms. Miyakawa. Yes, thank you. Um, just half an hour before this meeting started, Modesto City dropped their plan. Um, I just had a chance to peruse it very briefly. Um, and just so my question just is, they are doing their parent and staff feedback via um, uh, surveys online. Can you tell, it, tell me how we will be submitting? It sounds like we're doing a similar format where we'll have a forum with a presentation. Um, how are we submitting or, or um, asking them to submit feedback and questions. Well, so I have to see what, what they put in their plan. Now, before you even submit the waiver, you're required to do stakeholder engagement consult. And we, and that's all outlined in our waiver, uh, the dates and how we went about doing that. Um, I don't know if they're talking about seeking more input after the waiver on their plan. The reopening, it's similar yeah, to what you, you, yeah, it's similar to what you were just outlining with a phased approach okay. and so yeah. they're seeking feedback. Yeah, so what we'll be doing as I outlined in my presentation is what we will do after the board makes their decision next week, we will follow that up with a forum. We're also doing survey, we have a whole timeline uh, that we've worked on this week where we'll be uh, providing uh, surveys to our parents, mainly trying to determine what choice they want to do because we'll have to restructure all of, depending on what their feedback is, who's going to in-person and who's going to uh, be on distance learning. So there's mm -hmm. a lot of logistics. So that's the kind of input we'd have from parents. Um, 
as far as that. But it, on the forum, they'll be have an opportunity to submit questions. We'll probably come back like we have in the past with an FAQ following uh, each of those for the staff and then also for our parents. Okay, thank you. Mrs. Lindsay, any qu further questions? Yes, a couple. Um, one is uh, I, I heard in your presentation that um, what I read in the, the backup uh, information that it was a, a TK6 waiver, but I heard your comment that it was a TK12 waiver. Is that correct? Did I misunderstand you? Yeah, so let me clarify that. The waiver is TK6. If the county goes into red, that opens it up for TK-12. I see, okay. Yeah. And then my other question is, um, if we do the TK through first grade um, and we uh, bring them back, would it be prudent of us to wait two weeks instead of one week to see if there is any outbreak in that, in that first group of students as opposed to coming one week back? Again, that's what we, that's what we need to hash out at the next board meeting. So that's the kind of okay. feedback. And if the board, you know, we're we're providing a framework of what we feel is the right proposal. But if the board decides we'd rather have two weeks, then whatever your wishes are, we'll, we'll okay. modify. Okay, I, I, I misunderstood. I thought this was what we presented to the state, and that's what we had to uh, comply with. So no, uh, th there's flexibility. You could even put on your start date. You could say um, not to start before a certain date and you have flexibility. Okay, I guess what I would like tonight is to stress to anyone listening is that we're only a, a, a giving the waiver or sending the waiver in. We have, none of these dates are, you know, solid and that they're gonna happen. That, that gets my biggest concern because I don't want the rumor mirror getting going really fast. Right, and that's a good point. And that's why we're trying to communicate as clearly as possible that this is, we are submitting a waiver just to make us eligible. The, you know, the rubber will hit the road, you know, meet the road next week, really, when, when the board has that deep discussion. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Um, thank you to staff for giving us um, a week to digest this waiver. Um, thank you for all the board members who submitted your questions. And I know that I submitted several and was satisfied with the answers that were presented. And um, I'm grateful for that process. I look forward to our, our next step in the process um, in the coming weeks. Uh, we do have one action item tonight. It is to approve our LCAP. And um, the LCAP has changed because of COVID. Um, all of you have had a chance to read the new LCAP, review it. We've actually had it for, I don't know, um, how long have we had this? I, I remember reading this before, and so we've had it for a long time. Yeah. Um, so I appreciate the long time of having it. So um, is there any um, presentation or questions or thoughts you wanted staff wanted to share about it? Um, well, I knew we were just wait. We had to wait a time period, and that's why it's being brought at this meeting. We couldn't do it at the last meeting, so there's a bit of a waiting game. But I mean, did staff need to do anything at this point on the LCAP, or are, do I look for um, questions and then a vote, Mr. Fredrickson? Yeah, the only thing I need to one other requirement. One, we've met the public hearing requirement that we did two weeks ago, and now we're we're in line for the uh, approving this at, his, at the next meeting, but also we had to submit this plan to um, our local um, Office of Education and they provide a uh, learning continuity and attendance plan feedback form and I'm required to share that with the board. That was also an attachment you received and basically what that does is they go through each section of the plan and they, they mark whether it met expectations. And so I'm pleased to say uh, the feedback uh, from uh, the Office of Education, every one of our areas met expectations. And, um, and in closing, they said all the components of the learning continuity and attendance plan have been sufficiently addressed. Reviewers from the Stanislaus County Office of Education have no additional feedback or recommendations regarding the district's LCP submission. So um, that's, that's a good sign right there. 
Very good. So, um, fellow board, I'm looking at my screen. If you had a further question or clarification on the LCAP, if you could raise your hand and I'll call on you. Seeing none, I'm looking for a motion to approve the LCAP. I'll make a motion to approve. We have a motion by Mr. Collins and a second. A second. Second by Mrs. Lindsay. Can we have a roll call vote, please? Board Member Collins. Aye. Board Member Harvey. Aye. Board Member Lindsay. Aye. Board Member Miyakawa. Aye. Board Member Roth. Aye. That's a 5 0 vote. The LCAP is adopted. Um, I want to thank all my board members and staff for meeting at this special board meeting so that we can get our LCAP approved and that we can um, keep everyone informed in the process that we're going through with respect to the waiver. Uh, we will join again at our next regularly scheduled board meeting. Um, I believe it's October 6th. Um, at that meeting, um, it's not a high impact meeting. I did the um, agenda review today on it, um, but there is one item on it that we'll probably have some pretty good discussion on. Um, and that is, is uh, you know, what we do about the waiver and so forth and voting whether to put the kids back in school and the processes and so forth. So that will be where we'll spend most of our energy. I would encourage my fellow board members, if you have any questions or concerns or worries or thoughts, can you please reach out to uh, Mr. Fredrickson and staff to get your questions answered so that when we come to that board meeting that we've all been fully informed and ready um, to move forward. Again, um, keep our discussions separate um, with staff. Do not communicate with other board members, um, but I would encourage you to get your questions answered ahead of time from staff. All right. Yes, Mrs. Lindsay. Um, I would ask staff that um, if we do submit the questions, that they would give them back to us in a timely manner so that we have, if we have more questions concerning the response, that we have time to ask them in pro uh, over the uh, internet or whatever to call them as opposed to doing it during a meeting. Okay. So that is a great point. And thank you. That's a good segue. Um, Mrs. Lindsay into a comment that I would like to share with my fellow board members. Um, th these questions, if you can have them, and, I, and I'm going to get a confirmed date from Mr. Fredrickson of when we can have those questions um, asked to staff, because the questions for tonight, we had a deadline of Friday, or Thursday or Friday, and there were still questions coming in on Monday and it really uh, threw the schedule for staff members into a bit of turmoil because they had not planned to meet to answer additional questions today. And so, um, Mr. Fredrickson, when would you like to have our questions finalized to you um, prior to the board meeting? What date? And then um, Velma can then confirm that in email. What would be... Um, so I know that Mr. Ferguson, he just doesn't answer the questions. He calls a cabinet meeting. He gets everyone's input, and they answer the questions together uh, a lot of times. So when would you like those? Well, Friday, ideally, but it's we can meet. Friday. Yeah, yeah, and we can, we can meet on Monday. If there's things that came in Monday morning, like you thought over the weekend, uh, we could work on okay. in our, yeah. So really, Friday, ideally, no later than Monday morning. Right, and we're specifically talking about the questions dealing with um, the bringing of kids back to school, that particular question, which is laid out in the waiver. So please have those questions. Other questions for other board um, items, you can go a little bit later because the, quite frankly, the rest of the board agenda is fairly light. Yes, Mrs. Lindsay. That that's I understand and I appreciate them getting the questions, but if we don't receive the questions until Tuesday morning and the meeting is that night, we do not have a chance that we don't get the response to our questions until Tuesday morning or Tuesday afternoon. We do not have time to go back and ask staff again 
any responses. And I know this one meeting is one that's real close, but as a whole, we have three weeks. So I would hope that we could maybe make people get them in at least a week ahead of time. So we have time to res they respond and then we can go back. Well, thank you, Mrs. Lindsay. I think that's a great idea. So I encourage my fellow board members, don't wait till Friday. If they hear from all five of us before Friday, they can go to work on them and um, they can get the answers. All right, thank you all for joining Wait, us. Wait, Mr. Roth, sorry. Yes. Sorry, yes. Uh, I, guess that I, I, I guess I wanna apologize. That what I did submit my questions on Monday and I wanted to apologize to everybody uh, if, for the extra. Uh, I guess I had just been percolating and then I thought I had all my questions answered and then I had a few more and I just, I guess cause I'm just, I really wanna make sure that we, that we're just, I, I guess I over, I'm thinking a lot about this. And so uh, I'm sorry if I put everyone in a bad spot, that was my bad. Uh, mm -hmm. But over the weekend I was just percolating a lot and had a lot of questions. And so that's how come it ended up on a Monday, but normally that's not my MO, but this is kind of an intense time. So anyway, thank, thank you for you. understanding. Yeah, thank you, Mrs. Harvey. Um, we appreciate that. Um, and, and also, I know how much time and effort is going into this waiver and the plan and everything. And what's probably most frustrating, and, and I visit periodically with um, our superintendent, and it's very frustrating to him too, and that is, is that in Sacramento changes on them uh, almost on a daily basis. Where that we are all working on schedules and timelines and we're doing the best we can. And then someone may throw us a fast pitch or a curveball or something at the 11th hour at 11.45 and we have to pivot by 12 o'clock because yeah. some rule has changed along the way. So um, I appreciate you fellow board members and staff for the collegial way that we're trying to go through this process and doing what's best for our kids and families. So thank you all. We'll do all of our very best to make this come about in a good way. Uh, thank you for joining us tonight. The meeting is officially adjourned and we will visit together again on Tuesday. Bye-bye now.